Great morning, everyone. I am already sweating. Technology gets on my last entire nerves. Great morning, great morning and great morning. I am hopeful that you all can see me and you can hear me just fine. I had to make a few little changes and edits while I'm on this morning. I'm gonna make this message. Actually, let me change that. There are a few things that I, I make sure I wanna cover this morning with each and every one of you. I hope that you, 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 and you are having a great, 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 great morning. As you can see, we're getting ready to leave out of September, going into another month, getting ready to cross over into October really quick. But what I want to share with you, what I wanted to say with you this morning, really quick, it's going to come out of uh, Joel. It's going to come out of Joel. For those of you that are coming on, that are joining in, tuning in with us, make sure that you hit uh, that you hit that share button. This is going to be really great. I know some of you may have to come back and watch the replay. It is going to be a lot. Now, uh, if you're on watching on YouTube or watching on uh, social media or listening in with us, make sure that you hit this link and that you share it with somebody along the way. Now, I'm not sure exactly uh, what is giving on this other on this other network on this other side, but I'm talking to both of you guys. Switch swap here and let them tune in away also with me from YouTube and also from Facebook. Uh, I want to talk about restoration. Restoration. Joel, the book of Joel 225. If those of you that are looking for some restoration, need some restoration, just hit hashtag restoration on that screen. Wherever you might be, pop in restoration, 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 restoration. And the way I want to talk about it may be a bit, a little different than may, uh, how you may be used to hearing it or how you may have heard it, but that's what I do. So hit restoration, restoration. I want to give you a whole nother idea, a whole nother thought process about what restoration is, um, not to take away from what you may know or what you may be clear about, but just something to look, add to restoration. So everyone that is in a space or in a spot where you need restoration, you know someone that needs restoration, you would like restoration, you would appreciate a little bit of restoration, you need a little restoration, you would clap, clap if God gave you restoration, twirl around, spin around for a little bit of restoration, hit that hashtag restoration. I don't know how to say it in Espanol, but El Restorio in French, whatever the case may be, whatever your other language, your other choice, drop it in a hashtag restoration. Really simple, really good. Joel chapter two and 25, this is what he says, and this is a really strange scripture, but when I break it down, it should make a lot uh, more sense. I just want to put some context to it. He said, I will restore the years that the locust has eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palm worm, my great army, which I sent among you. All right. So that's Joel 25. Somebody drop that down there. Joel 25. He said, I'm going to restore those years. Now, what does all this mean? Now, when you look at uh, some of these books, you got Joel, you got Amos, some of these Old Testament prophets. Part of their hugest job and role is they're into agriculture, farming, gardening, vine dressing, all of that stuff. So in Joel chapter two, when this Joel scripture was happening in Joel chapter two, the way that God is chastising, he's chastising his people during this time who have gotten on his nerves. What he's done is he's released insects to them. Now, I think that's kind of like, you know, really petty of God to do. I do, because one of the most troubling things you can do, how pesky and irritating insects are. Like, can you imagine God wanting to chastise you and he sends some bugs to your house like gobs of roaches? Now, I got to bring this down in perspective so that you could fall in love with the storyline a little bit better. But just imagine as much as some of you that are watching may hate bugs and everybody doesn't hate bugs and everybody doesn't have an issue with bugs. But imagine if God wanted to chastise you. This is what Joel is saying. There's a chastisement. And whatever insect that you have no need for in your house, no need for in your space, he releases it. Joel is talking about this chastisement that's been released. If he just sent a million roaches to your enemy's house, can you just imagine that? Like every which way, because what it does is it compromises your ability to have social gatherings. 
It makes life uncomfortable. You're scratching, itching, plucking, pulling, snatching, because there's a general unrest if you have bugs. And if you cannot control the bugs that are in your home or that are in your space, there's a whole infestation. So when there's a plague of it, you know, there is an innumerable amount of insects that have been released into this space. It's like you go to certain areas and you get an overabundance of mosquitoes or something really pesky. I know some of y'all may not mind roaches or like mind little spiders and everything crawling around in your area, crawling around in your space, but there's an infestation of them. It's environmental. And because it was so environmental, it's so huge. In Joel chapter two, by the time he says, I'm going to restore the years, the reason that he's talking about it, there's an infestation of all different manner of insects. All right. Somebody hashtag insects. If you have any of those emojis down where you are, why don't you find and utilize some of those bug emojis that you probably never touched, probably never used? This is a great time to go in there and use your fingers and have very interactive modern day today technology work to your advantage and start dropping down the spiders and the beetles and the bugs. And so Joel, this book of Joel, it opens up a whole nother conversation and this is going on during times where there are no pesticides, there, there, there are no moves like that. Joel chapter two, when he says that I'm going to restore, he says, I'm going to restore to you the years that the locust has eaten. Now, let me tell you why this is so important. Well, what restore means, restore means that I'm going to bring it back. I'm going to bring it back. And what am I bringing back? I'm going to bring you back a right, a previous right that you've had. So it is already had you've already had access to it this is what he's saying you've already had access to it you've already had this in your space and he says so what i'm going to do i'm going to give you back those years i'm going to give you back previous rights all right hashtag that previous rights what you've already been exposed to what you've already experienced what you already know what you've already been clear about i'm going to give you back those rights all right and these are rights these are privileges so restoration has to do with God giving you back rights and privileges that you've already experienced, what you've already had, what you've already walked into, and what maybe you were pushed away from, fired from, excluded from, excused from. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give you back your previous rights. I'm going to give you back previous rights, previous rights. And when I'm going to give you back your previous rights, he said, or rights or practices or your customs, I'm going to put that back into your space. Now, what he says to him in 25, I'm going to restore those years that the locust has eaten. Now, let me talk to you about why this is this is so critical to this message and it's so critical to this space. The reason why this is such a pressure and such a great applicable word for Joel is because the land is plagued with insects. They have all types of crazy stuff, roaches and beetles and what's some other insects that I'm missing, wasps and all of these different parasites. And so what's happening is because it's a plague of them, there's so many of them, the environment is thrown off. What belongs in one space at one particular season, at one particular time, all of these insects are now overlapping. Now, there's certain seasons that for the purpose of them producing and, and having children and mating, that they have to go away. They're not even supposed to be mating in certain spaces and things of that sort constantly. So what's happening is as a result, all of these plagues are being released. So the bugs and the insects are just freaking whenever they get ready to. And that's what's happening. The more they afflict and the more they freak, the more they start growing, the more they start developing. And so when Joel is prophesying and Joel is speaking during this time of the plagues, what he's saying is the bugs keep reproducing themselves. The insects keep producing themselves. Now, why is this a problem? It's a problem because they're now attaching themselves to vegetation. They're attaching themselves to vegetation with the people eat. So if the people are eating and it's all of these insects and all of these bugs, people and bugs typically don't eat the same things. So the bugs are going for the grass, they're going for the vegetation, and they're eating in seed form or they eat up whatever you were supposed to harvest, whatever you would have pulled in for crop. What these insects are doing is they're eating away at your seed so that you don't even have a chance to flourish. You don't have a chance for it to grow. You don't have a chance for it to thrive. So one of the more critical times while Joel is prophesying is that these insects have been released in your space before your stuff even has a chance to grow or thrive. 
before you get into your, your big place or your largest space or the spot that you know you're supposed to be in, where restoration comes to do, it comes to first address rights of yours that have been stolen. How have they been stolen or taken? Now, why does he have to restore? Just like if you go to a store in times of a crisis, you know, we had hurricane season. Hurricane season, you go to a store, there's no water, there's no bread, all of your basics are gone because people are in preparation for some type of world catastrophe or some type of catastrophe in your space. So as a result of it, we gotta wait for trucks to come in from this place, that place, the other, to restore or to restock or to bring back what was once there to put all of those, those resources, all of that food, all of that water back in the space. And so what happens is when those trucks come in, they're able to take it from nothingness and then bring in everything that was supposed to be in the store. And so the reason that the store needs to be restored or restocked is because it has already been depleted. And so God cannot restore you if you have not first been depleted. I got anybody here that's watching on this live, that's listening on this radio broadcast. I need you to just rock in it. If you've not been depleted, then if you've been depleted, I put, I'm going to change how I was going to say that. If you've been depleted, then you're a candidate for restoration. Now, Joel says this. He said, you have been depleted for years. This is what the message of Joel is. He said, they have eaten away your things or they have done this in Joel 25. He said, I'm going to restore to you the years. I mean, he's sweating under these hot lights. This has been happening for years. And so if things have been going from you for months, you're not in space. But for those of you that have been experiencing uh, eating away at crops, uh, chomping away at seeds in its seed form or in its infant form, he said this has been going on for years. So he talks about the locust and the canker worm, the caterpillar and the palmer worm. Now I'm gonna spend October going into that more, especially with the changing of seasons. Anytime it's a changing of season, there's always gonna be a changing of insects. So go ahead and write that down. A changing of season brings a changing of insects. Now let me be me for a moment and go ahead and talk about this the way that I do. Thank you for those who are sharing. The reason that there's gonna be a change of insects with a change of environment is because each insect, they have different appetites. They don't all eat the same thing. And some are constantly on a run. So while they're eating and while they're surviving, there are also other insects that are looking for them to eat and survive off of. And so appetites of insects, they start to change, all right? They begin to change, they start changing. So whenever you're in a new season of your life or you're in a new space in your life, you have to watch the appetites, the mannerisms, of the parties and what is in your space. Now, what starts to happen as a result, you know, you'll start seeing that because of the environment's changing, the leaves are changing, the diets of the insects that are in the spaces and in seasons with you, things that used to eat off of you or that could eat off of you or that could eat around you for a time or for a space, you'll find all of a sudden instant, quick, unexplicable movement. Now, you can typically tell when the seasons are going to change or if they're not going to change based upon how fast certain creatures move, even birds. They're always telling you, nature is telling you what's going to happen next. Nature tells you about your door. Nature tells you about temperament. Nature will lead you in terms of what you are going to wear. It starts speaking to you. And so why this is so important, if you ever want to know what's getting ready to happen upstairs, you always want to look at something in nature. They're always telling signs. So, for example, when you have seasons right now, when you have animals that are leaving or insects that are leaving one space and all of a sudden you don't see them, it's not that they've died, it's that they've migrated and moved because it's necessary for them to survive. You have ants, for example, when it's seed time, ants are coming for seeds, right? Beetles, beetles eat bugs. And so if there are no ants and there's nothing for the beetle to eat, the beetle has to migrate to warmer weather. The beetle has to migrate and they have to travel to where it's green because as insects move, you find that one insect is leading the another because the next behind him is chasing for something to eat. He's looking for survival. And so anytime there's a seasonal shift in your life, everything that is connected, interconnected around you, near you, they all get indicators about movement. And so those beetles, those beetles, they want to eat other bugs. Bees move and they follow the flower. 
And so nature testifies to nature. Nature speaks to nature. It says, come here, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So when this plague of insects is released in Joel's time, all of these insects are thrust here. It is literally a smorgasbord. Everything, everyone around is eating except for those who God is chastising. And so when God chastises you, God has a way of doing it to make sure that he gets your attention. <laughs> He's going to make sure that even though you may not even necessarily want to do his will, then when I say do his will, you know, a lot of times it may sound like it's very nice, but there's nothing nice about doing the will of God. It's not. It's 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 his will. It's not your will. It's not really what you want to do. It may sound like it's something that you want to do, but the real will of God is absolutely going to drive you crazy. God's will for you, for example, God's will might be for you to go through this illness or go through this space so that you could be a light to somebody else. Like God, well, why the heck do I get to have that part of your will? Why can't you will me something else? Because I did not and would not have signed up for your will if I would have known what won't was going to happen. And so the will, there are benefits to being in his will, there's safety with being in his will, but the will is not necessarily something that you necessarily want to do. Even Jesus said, and he's on that cross, he said, listen, he said, I know what I got to do. I know what I'm supposed to do. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done, which shows you that even Jesus had his own will. Now, when you act like you don't have a will or there's something that you don't want to do, <laughs> or there's some things that you just are disinterested in, you a whole entire life. Everyone has a will, something that you wanna do, something that you wish you could do. You have a will and God doesn't force you to do his will, but he got a strong way of convincing you to make it happen. So he tells him, I'm gonna restore these years. And he said, so now I told you, I said, beetles, they want those bugs. They want the bugs, the bees want the flowers and the rats and fruit flies, guess what they want? They want the fruit. And so you don't have beetles coming after what fruit flies and things of that are going to go after because they're literally pursuing their diet. And when something is hungry, it's going to find a way to eat. And before they move into going into desperation, before the insects move into going into anything that is desperate or desperation, before desperation comes in, they collect all of the information they need, they watch the colors. They are able to discern by the wind and they start moving and they start migrating. You know, they don't wait until everything is done before they start moving. They get their assignment. They get their marching orders and they already know where they're going. The other in instrument of them knowing or not just knowing where they're going, even the insects that are blind and are not clear. They're so busy chasing behind what they're focused on that a beetle that wants to eat bugs because you're chasing. And if anybody has ever chased anything or been chased, sometimes a thrill of good, a good old chase. And people don't really want you a lot of times. Sometimes they just want the chase. And after they've chased you and got you, they can disconnect because they were in love with the chase. So the more difficult, the more distant many times that you are, the more you up your chances of staying chaseable. But when you give it away so fast, you stop your momentum and you stop their momentum and you stop interest, you stop attraction. And so you have those that are not really blind or sensitive to what's happening, just your desire to eat. When a man want to eat, when a woman want to eat, when a bug want to eat, when a dog want to eat, when a cat want to eat, when a roach want to eat, when a spider want to eat, when a thing wants to eat, eating, wanting to survive. And I'm talking about just plain old hunger. Somebody hashtag hunger. Thank you, Francesca. Hunger, 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 hunger. Hunger is creating the need for restoration, right? You don't restock a store to set whatever was depleted off of the shelves. You don't stock a store or stock that store if you don't have intention on serving those who are hungry. Everything you're going to that grocery store to get, you're going in there because you're hungry. There's some necessities that you need, but one of the primary that you need is going to be something to eat. Nothing survives without feeding its appetite. Nothing survives without feeding its appetite. Nothing, nothing. Everything alive is going to eat. Everything alive has to eat.
And so because of it, what restoration does is restoration takes a great look into not only what was lost, restoration takes a great peek into what was lost. It's an awareness. And so it brings you back previous rights. It is not just a restocking, but it's recognition because someone could try and attempt to bring you something. But if you're brought what you don't need, if you're brought what you already had, then you've not been restored. But when you've been depleted, your shelves have been empty, your store has been raided, then you need restoration. And so for those of you who are wondering, am I a candidate for it? Are your shelves depleted? <laughs> have you been raided? Have you been eaten? Have you been devoured? Have you been gobbled down of? And has that process been restored? Has it been replenished? Have those practices been put back in place? That's the question. Job 25, he said, so I'm gonna restore the years that the locust has eaten. And here's where it gets a little murky. He says, I'm gonna restore the years. Now, what is years? And this isn't rhetorical, what is years? It's time, right? Years, times. According to our, our calendar, according to how we may process those that are watching that are, you know, that are stateside, you're round about here. We are processing here based upon 365, January to December. That gives us our year. What he's saying is the locust, the palmer worm, when this plague was so strong, they're literally out of food. The insects, they have nothing to eat. So the diets of everything is thrown off. When you're in a time and in a space where it's like your season or your et cetera is depleted. Everything is trying to eat. Everything's hungry. And when everything's hungry, many times you don't have anyone willing to feed anything else because everyone is trying to eat. And because everyone's trying to eat and everyone's diets have been compromised because of the plagues that are hitting and that are going on in this area in this time, it's not just the ones who are in one space that are affected, but everything literally is affected. And so what they're showing is that when this plague is gone out in Joel chapter two, or in, the, in this book of Joel, while the plague is gone out, everyone's being affected, everything's hungry, everything's trying to eat. And so he says in verse 25, I'm gonna restore the years to you that the locust, now this is gonna be the first one and I'm gonna go back into breaking down all of the individual roles and responsibilities that are attached to each individual insect here in this verse. So the first thing is gonna be the locust. And he said, I'm gonna to restore to you the years, the times. So we know that locusts, palmer worms, caterpillars, canker worms, all of these things, they don't eat, they don't eat flesh. They're not meat eaters, right? They are supposed to be eating vegetation and at bare minimum, if they should really get hungry, they should go ahead on and eat each other. But Joel 25, he said, Joel 225 said, I'm going to restore to you the years. Wait a minute. Their diets are so jacked up, so crazy that you mean to tell me that what they've been surviving on, these are locusts. Now, locusts, they eat everything. They're devourers. That is this their nature. They devour everything in their space. And if you've ever come across an individual or come across a space where you have had your life attached or attacked by locusts, they are devourers. So they leave very little, they come in great swarms. And when you open yourself up in that space, what the locust does, they come through and they literally, they come and they're airborne, right? They swoop everything up top, zoom, 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 zoom. And then once they've come through that, they leave down from the bottom and they leave it in remnant. And so what the locusts leave behind, because locusts have such a greater appetite, greater teeth, greater skill, and they are devourers, once the devourer comes in, or once that space is removed, he said, I'm going to restore to you the years. Their appetites are so strong and out of control that they start eating away at time, right? So what are they filling their bellies up with? They're filling their selves up with what belongs to you. So when he says, I'm going to restore to you these years, they have eaten away at your crops. How did they eat your time? Is this literal? No, it's not like they could take a bite out of your 12 p.m or take a hunk out of, what's our time right now? Somebody dropped for me the time. They can't take a bite out of your 11 o'clock a.m. They can't take a bite out of your last October or your yesterday or your September 29th. They're not eating, 9.52, thank you, overseer, 9.52 a.m. They're not, <laughs> because you can't fill yourself up off of eating what is immaterial. You can't do it. 
He said they've eaten your time. So what really have they been chomping and chewing on? They chewed on your crops. We talked about them even in larvae form. They've devoured your seeds. All of that is time. When you put a seed in the ground or when you sow a seed or when you put a seed in the ground and you expect to have apples and then you have a locust or you have a palmer worm, a caterpillar or canker worm that goes and eat your seed, they're eating away at your time because I can't get time back for the shovel that I grabbed and went to purchase from Home Depot and dug in the dirt, pulling up minerals and soils and oils, finding the perfect space for sunlight, finding a spot that would nurture the seed. I can't do that. Then I got to go find brand new manure, stick manure back over top of the seed, find a cow, go through this whole process. And now the seeds that I've sown because of the insects that are in my space, they have literally eaten away my trip to Home Depot. They've eaten away the shovel that I purchased. They've eaten away the dirt. They've eaten away all the manure that I've stuck my hands in. Those of you messed up your manicures playing with manure and crap you shouldn't have played with, touching things you shouldn't have touched just to try to make sure that you were not wasting your time. Time. All right. If there's anybody here that don't like to waste your time, just write that. Don't waste my time. Don't waste my time. What Joel says is. He says, what I need to do, thank you for those who are writing. If you want to drop that thing so I can post it up for those on my team on social on Facebook. If he says what happens is when they're eating this or when they are eating away at this message or eating away at your time, they are devouring, eating away processes. All right. They're eating away processes and systems. So if I was sowing seed in one season, expecting to have tree harvest and crop in another and when I go to the same spot that I sold in looking for a return, looking to receive something, he says, this is what has created this depletion. And with depletion comes a depression. Depletion brings depression. Y'all write that? Depletion brings about a depression. Why are you depressed when there's a depletion? A lot of times there's a, deple a depression attached to depletion because many times if persons don't know how to survive without anything, they said, I've done my job. I've done my process. I've sown. I put the seed in the ground. But there are things underground that I cannot control. I cannot control. And because I cannot control it, I can't stop it. One of the even the reasons that you have to even know when you're going into new territories or there are new scenes, you even have to know and be clear, even if you want to get rid of certain things, they're not certain pesticides in place and things of that sort. But application for a direct strike it relies on the product that you're using as your pesticide to catch the insect at the correct stage of its life. So what I mean, for example, is in order for you to even be knowledgeable or even for you to purchase something that would help you get rid of insects that are in your space that don't belong, in order for you to do it, you need to know what stage that it's in because you cannot kill an animal that it's in its larvae form that has already morphed into its adult form. The pesticide is for it as a child or as a juvenile or as its early stage, not necessarily for it as an adult. But when there's a plague of insects and there's a problem with these insects and you don't know what stage they're in, you can't even kill it. There are strategic times and moments which you have to kill your enemy and you can't kill them too fast. There are other times that as a larvae, certain insects fight off other insects and they're able to eat and devour them at certain times in certain spaces, but it's all about timing. And so when God says, I'm gonna restore the years that they've eaten away, they have confused you about where you were, they confused you about seeds you've sown, and there's been a depletion attached to that depression. So the depression says, now that you've been depleted, what am I gonna eat? This has changed you visibly. This has changed your countenance because now that you cannot eat, it's causing you to look different. It may cause you to sound different. It may cause you to respond different because your diet has been affected by depletion. And so when depletion comes, you could almost tuck your head, hide away somewhere in shame. And then what shame does, shame says, stay away. Shame says, go away. Shame says, remain in isolation. It says, remain in some form of bondage. This is what shame does. Shame runs you away. So when the scripture in Joel says in 25 talks about restoration, you don't know you've been restored if what you've been eating from and experiencing has been depletion. 
So when you know to know that you've been restored, he says, I'm going to bring this back and I'm going to put back on your shelves, back in your space, back in your cabinets, back in your cupboards, what you've been missing. And so in order to do it, I'm going to restore to you that the years, these years that the locust has eaten. Now, he doesn't speak about them digesting it or devouring it. He said they dined on it. They've eaten it. But what they cannot do and what they're not is finishers. All right. So they ate it, but they didn't finish their food. They ate it, didn't finish their food. I'm going to take you guys into your, your October. I probably need to get ready to go because I think I'm a little bit over time this afternoon or this morning. For those of you who wanted to sew, thank you. for If you put that on on, sew, on Facebook, thank you. Uh, drop that on Facebook real quick. Switch over real quick. Drop that on Facebook and I can plug that post in there. For those who are asking how they can sew, I can send that to you. For those that want to sew into this message, restoration. What he was saying to it is, when I send this restoration that this locust has eaten, how did they eat it and why did they eat it? They eat it and they're eating different things because your enemies are running out of foods to devour. They're running out of their own resources. They're not comfortable in their own space. And so what they've done is they have attached themselves into other parts that are fruitful, that are fruitful. And you have to be very careful that when you're in a time and when you're a space of fruitfulness, that you are cognizant of each and every everything that is in your space that wants to eat away because it's hungry. All right. So they have to come to an oasis. They have to come to a place or a space that is healthy. And so as a result of that, he says, I'm going to restore to you these years. So there's a recognition with restoration. All right. There's recognition. One of the things that has to happen with restoration, nothing worse when something is gone or something is out. You cannot pretend that you don't know that it's gone or that you don't know that it's out. There's an acknowledgement that says, hey, I'm a candidate for restoration because things have been so depleted. And so because of this depletion, I need something new to devour, something new to uh, something new to consume. And so as a result of that, as a result of it, there's the pin there. That's my uh, cash information. If you want to send the cash app or send a seed that way, or even through Facebook, he says, this is going to be your time period of restoration. Now, if this message is if, if blessing you. I may have to come back on and do this for a few more moments and break down all of these things. Thank you, Cornelia. I see you. Those seeds are even coming in. God bless you. So what this is doing is, he said, I'm going to restore to you these years that the locust has eaten. There's even a healing in that verse because he has to acknowledge to you if you're trying to explain to folks that your times have been eaten. If you're trying to explain it, you can almost sound a little crazy. You can almost sound as if you have lost your whole entire mind because who's going to believe or understand that something that is not naturally designed or geared to eat this away? So when things are hungry, you can't even describe changes in temperament or personality types. Because they say, why did they change on you all of a sudden like that? Hunger will make people change their minds. Oh, it will. Hunger will make folks change their minds, their mentality, because they'll start wondering, why does it look like you're eating and I'm starving? Hunger will make folks break in your home, break in your refrigerator, eat what you have labeled on your own lunchbox, on your lunch pail at work. When an individual is hungry, they will rob from you, take from you, steal from you just to feed their hunger. And that's just hunger. I won't even talk to you about what thirsty folks do. All right. Because <laughs> there's nothing wrong with being hungry. But then when those individuals are thirsty, Someone that is thirsty will do anything to anyone around anyone just to quench a thirst. All right. And so he says with this palm worm of this restoration, I want to go because I know some of you are going to leave and you're going to have to come back and watch this because it's so loaded. It's intentionally loaded because I want you to be able to come back. I want you to grab a hold to it and I want you to find the space in your life. You can look and tell what season you're in and what space you're in based upon what around you or what insects are around you. All right. So he goes into this and says, I am going to restore the years because they have eaten it. There are some things that have been eaten away that do belong to you, that did belong to you. And so for him to restore it, there has to be an awareness and he's going to bring back previous rights that belong to you. So I want y'all to write down on your comment section. You're writing down in your sections while you're talking. Give me back my rights. 
These are rights, not privileges. These are rights of yours. These are my rights. These are my rights. So the reason that he's talking about this restoration and giving back rights, I'm giving you back your rights because in great ways you've been wrong. All right. So I need to give you back your rights, your privileges. When you have your rights back, when you have your privileges, it gives you a certain sense of confidence. When you have your rights, when you have your privileges, there's an authority that you have because you're not in space that you were in or that you used to be. And thank you, social media. Thank you, Facebook. If you're not in space or place where you used to be. So when giving me back my rights, you're giving me back my accesses. And so when he's talking about him restoring these years that these locusts has eaten, he said not only did the locusts eat it, but whatever the locusts left, and these are huge devourers, whatever remnants or residue that locusts left behind, locusts left, there was enough left from you until the canker worm got to eat off of it too. So this again is speaking to how fruitful you were. This isn't arrogance. This is a reality. There are people that can come into your life, come into your space years later and have no idea about how fruitful you were. You would have caught me just 20 years ago, just five years ago, just six minutes ago. He says, whatever the locusts ate, the reason that they were able to eat all of these distinctive different insects were able to eat is because you had just that much. So people can't stay and eat somewhere if there's no food on the menu. There's nothing on the table. So the locusts ate. And as hungry as locusts are, and as much as they are devourers, you still had something left. And so they have eaten away from you at your most fruitful time. But God will never leave his people without something left. Now, maybe it's not what you wanted. It's not what you had. But God always makes sure that he gives you something, even if it's nothing more than manna that comes to you day by day. That means that I didn't give you the account you used to have or the resources or the money, but day by day, what manna does, I made sure that it dropped for you. It tasted like what you like. It was just what you needed for the day. And so what I sustained you with, I gave you sustenance, even when I didn't give you what you wanted the way you wanted, because I was reteaching you and then re-showing you how to process life in a space where it looks as if you've been totally depleted. What the locusts left, however, this is where total devastation comes. Because after you've been hit with locusts, and if you've ever seen locusts, you know locusts eat so much that they can eat and disappear for years and come back still surviving off of what they ate. You had so much until locusts got full off of your stock. Some of you, and I'm speaking not just natural resources. If you think I'm just speaking naturally, I'm not. I always am going to talk in multiple spaces to multiple people because that's going to be the audience that I'm talking to. So you could have been loaded with resources, loaded with benefits, loaded with health. And so what happens is now that they've eaten away of everything that they could eat away at, the locusts have moved. They full, they can disappear because you had that much of a wealth of meal. The locusts leave. And then after the locusts leave, the canker worm comes in. Now the canker worm can't devour. They don't have the molars and the abilities to chomp and chew like the locusts do. But the canker worms also that don't fly with the locusts with their wings came and hit swarm through. Then you have the canker worm that now crawls. All right. So some things flew in your direction. Some things were very obvious, but you can't stop it. You can't stop a swarm of locusts. But then there were things that crawled their way into your life. <laughs> there are individuals, persons, places, spaces, and things that crawled low enough to crawl in, underhanded enough to crawl. Who am I talking to this morning? To crawl in. There are some attacks that are obvious. There are others that just crawled in, crawled. <laughs> Where are my little emoji fingers and my little emojis and the crawlers, right? They didn't have wings, they crawled. And when they didn't have wings, that means they can't fly or they don't have the ability to go but so high. Let me say it this way. No, 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 let me say it my way. They don't have the ability to think but so high, to go but so high, to experience but so high. And so, you know, a lot of times they're going to always be different enemies that come into your space or that are coming for your crops and none of the enemies look alike. And so what you have to know in maturing is that there's some you need to let in and you have to let in. 
because you cannot get restored or total restoration until you first receive total depletion. You need depletion for restoration. The ones that crawled in, who am I talking to in here? All right, find y'all an amen neighbor, somebody's name on these lines somewhere. If you guys are tuning in or listening in online and high five them, use your right color and your right hand emoji if you got to, boom, and high five somebody on this line. We can't touch a neighbor, we could internet touch them. What this does, or these crawling insects do, they are not going to have, they're not high functioning, all right? They're not. They are low enough to do what it is that they need to do. And so there's high enemies and there's low enemies. And if you're not careful, you could think that you're not worthy of attracting high enemies, and that's not the truth. When God has called you and when God has purposed you, you could walk in and you could be, you know, at the lowest role in a company or in a corporation. But one of the ways that you're always going to be able to know that you are <laughs> in another space, it's going to be what you start attracting. It's going to be who you pull and, and who is going to notice or who pays attention. And so many times what happens is you start seeing these locusts come in and say, well, why was something that is higher than me that's flying up here be looking for little old me? They are flying in, but then these canker worms, they're crawling in. Thank you, Valida. Spiritual wickedness in high places. And wickedness sometimes comes with wings, winged wickedness. And so they sporadically, occasionally, carefully, they come into your environments. And in those environments, they are capable, they are well able of coming in those environments they come into those environments and coming into those environments, they're crawling. And so they're crawling and where they're crawling to. They're crawling specifically because they are knowledgeable and they notice that the locusts have left some materials and left residue behind. What also the locust has done, they have devoured meals that the canker worm couldn't fully devour with their claws and their tentacles and their molars. What they've done is the locust made it possible for the canker worm to do its job. The canker worm could have never preceded the locust because the canker worm could not have caused that much damage. So even the release of certain attacks, they come to you specifically because they understand that in order for me to do this, I got to wait to do this until that one has done that. So God doesn't even send all your enemies at one time, but he will send them consecutively. Finish that. Finish that. All right. Get this done. Get that done. Get that done. Get that done. So that the word Joel spoke was so exact. It was so accurate. He wasn't giving Joel a word about a new refrigerator when Joel needed a word for the people about what's going on with these insects. And so it was so accurate. It was so specific. This was a word of hope. He wasn't telling Joel that God said, you're going to get a car in seven days. No, the word of the Lord is, I need to know what's going on with these insects because what was going on, the people couldn't eat. And so he said, when the caterpillar, the canker worm finishes, and I'll have to go back all into this later. He said, they will get into the caterpillar and the palmer worm. And he said, they were all a great army that I sent. And I sent it to deplete you, to chastise you. Chastise me for what, God? Why do you want to chastise me? Times God chastises us to get to a place into a space of faith. Two minutes. Y'all give me a two minute countdown. You chat, you're chastised because God wants to have you placed. He wants to have you set up and he wants to put you back into a place where your spiritual principles and your spiritual values are reflective of where they're supposed to be. And so what he'll do to it is I'm going to send an army. And when I send you this army, I'm going to send this army and the army is going to drive you back to prayer. It's going to drive you right back to the basics and it's going to set you where you need to be. This is what I'm going to be going into October. I got to go because I got to use the bathroom real bad, y'all. So I got to go real fast. If you want to sew, the links are right there. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I got to get off of here. God bless y'all. I will see y'all real soon. Bye and bye and bye and bye and bye. Woo, bye. Hallelujah.